home, I'm going to come in. So not all websites will include something like this, but it is quite common to have something that shows you what page you're actively on. Am I on the home page, the about page, the recent post page, or something like that? And as I mentioned, it does involve an extra class. So I'm going to come over here into my index and on my home, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a class and I'm going to call it current page. You will often see people call this active. So this is the active page. The problem I have with that is the active we have, it's on a link and we active is a pseudo class for our link for when we're clicking on it. So people get really mixed up or they think they can style the active state of a page by using that pseudo class. And it's not at all how it works. The active, if you remember, it's when you're clicking on it. So I like either using uh, current or current page. I'm going to use current page because I think it's super obvious what it is. And I'm going to keep that in my navigation stuff here. And actually I put a big typography comment there and I never kept those going. So while we're here, let's just really quickly do that. This would be layout. And my nav is sort of a subcomponent of the layout. So for that, I'm just going to do navigation like this instead of having it as a big section. So we're going to have our navigation. And inside of my navigation styles, this is per part of it, we have my current page. Um, sometimes you'll see the current page is styled as a different color. So you could literally at this point come in and say color and change the color of it. And you can see that that is now red, but it's going to keep that hover color. But we have my color and we can change that. In this case, we don't want to change the color. What I want to do is I want to add an underline underneath. There's two different ways of doing it. One of them is with something called a pseudo element. And that just complicates matters a little bit. And we're going to get into them much later on because they're super useful for decoration. But we can get away with just using a border. So if I have border, I can say it's a one pixel solid. And I can set the current color that we're using uh, to make it the same as my text. Whoops, I made a mistake though. It's on all the sides. And we haven't done a lot with borders. So I'm going to show this one to you is because uh, you might have forgotten that we can just do a border bottom. And now it's only going to put that underline on the bottom. Now, if you find it's a little bit too close to the text itself, you can also come through and add a little bit of padding. The one thing I wouldn't do is only add the padding to the current page. I would add it to all the pages. And this is in general a good idea for your navigation anyway, because if somebody's on a mobile version of your site and they have to click with their fingers, padding makes your button a little, makes that nav link a little bit bigger and it makes it easier to click on. So if I come on here, I might do padding 0.25M and zero on the left and the right. You don't have to do the zero on the left and the right. The only problem is this border grows to match that padding on the left and the right side. Um, for the mobile reason that I just explained, it's probably better. But for now, I'm just going to leave that as a zero. So the underline matches. And it does still give us a little bit of extra room for what we can click on. Um, the last thing that I'm going to look at right now, though, is we want something like this to show that it's an interactive element. This is technically an interactive element because it's a link to my homepage still but I'm already on this page. So why would I click on it again? So even though it's still going to stay as a link, I don't really want it to look like it's a link, like I want these two to look. So what I can do is actually say that my current page hover has a color that is back to my default color because I don't want it to change. And if I do that, now when I'm hovering on top, it's not changing. I know in the Scrimba video, you just see it as like a blue pointer arrow, but if you're looking at it in your own, it would be a hand cursor. Um, so it is, people will still know it's interactive, but it's sort of double hinting at them that we probably don't want to click on that because we're already there. So it's like an extra hint along the way. Whereas these ones, it's really obvious that those are things that we might want to click on and visit. So with that done, I think it's looking pretty good. In the next video, let's look at how we can actually make this on the left side and throw this over onto the right side. And then after that, we can actually make the whole thing respond.